Willie. Joe, uh, well said, and I think there are a lot of people, conservatives, not the ones you've talked about there, but conservatives out in public life yesterday, writers and thinkers who have come out both against the president declaring a national emergency, which he continues yep. to threaten to do, and against Steve King, prominent conservatives withdrawing their support, in fact, donating to the candidate who's announced a primary run against Steve King. So it's not happening in Washington, in the Capitol Hill, in that building, and you listed all the names, but there are people like you and many other conservatives who are standing up against what they've seen over the last couple of days. Let's get right into this, though, Joe. As Mika mentioned, today is the first missed payday for federal workers and contractors who are either furloughed or not being paid in the partial government shutdown, a standoff that has now entered day 21 and joins the December 1995 into January of 96 shutdown as the longest in history. Yesterday, protests across the country, including in Washington, Chicago, Detroit, New York, Kentucky, wow. Dallas, and Ogden, Utah, where the Internal Revenue Service is, one of the largest employers in that area, and three-quarters of the workforce is furloughed. The head of the FBI Agents Association said nearly 5,000 special agents, intelligence analysts, attorneys, and professional staff are currently furloughed, resulting in reduced staffing for what they call critical functions that support field operations. There were a few more Republican defections as the House approved two appropriations bills Thursday. Twelve Republicans vote to vote with the Democrats to reopen the Transportation Department and Housing and Urban Development, while 10 voted to fund agriculture programs like food stamps and the FDA, which has suspended some food inspections. The administration, as I mentioned, has begun laying the groundwork for a declaration of national emergency to bypass Congress to fund the border wall. It's certain to be challenged in court, but it is a shutdown exit plan that would let President Trump claim victory on his campaign pledge in order to sign a bill to reopen the government. President Trump said yesterday he is leaning toward that national emergency. I have the absolute right to declare a national emergency. The lawyers have so advised me. I'm not prepared to do that yet, but if I have to, I will. If this doesn't work out, Probably I will do it. I would almost say definitely. So, Joe, I'll let you tackle that one. Also, just want to sprinkle wow. in NBC News and others reporting that the president is looking at diverting funds, disaster relief funds from places like California after the wildfires, places like Puerto yeah. Rico, Florida, across the country, money that's going to rebuild those places toward now building the wall. Building the wall, and uh, John Heilman, uh, Donald Trump says he's got the legal authority for it. I don't know what lawyers he's talking to. Uh, it is, there's no doubt the 1976 Act is very broad, but there's also no doubt that Donald Trump never understands that when he thinks out loud and says, if I don't get my way in political negotiations, I'll just declare a national emergency. That does not fall under the Act. And one seriously doubts that if Harry Truman couldn't compel the steel industry to not strike at the at time of war, Donald Trump will not be able to declare a national emergency because he's not getting his way with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Yeah, courts, I, courts will chew that up and spit that out, and people like Lindsey Graham will look like idiots. Well, let's hope. Um, I, you know, I, I, Joe, I, I, you're a lawyer, although a simple country lawyer, as you often say, but I'm not. So, dumb, dumb country uh, lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, so I, I hope that you're right. It would seem that, you know, if you thought about the precedent, you thought about the, the, the history, uh, the, you cite Truman, uh, that, that there's a good cause to be uh, hopeful that if the president does go ahead with this, that the courts will stop him. I, you know, as, as you know, the, you know, the courts have changed over time. And so uh, I, I wouldn't, I'm hopeful, I'm, I'm all, yeah, equally hopeful that we'll never have to test that, that the, test the courts on this matter. Uh, I mean, look, I think all the things you said earlier and the analysis all strike me as right um, in a kind of obvious way. That, that, that we're seeing the rot of the Republican Party and we're seeing Trump uh, abuse his power if he goes ahead with this uh, in the way you suggest. But I just take it a little bit further in this sense. It, all of the things that all the things that are bad about the notion of declaring a, a, a national emergency in this context are 
are problematic in, in the extreme. But they're all the more so over the fact that the entire thing is built on a gargantuan lie, which is not merely is he usurping his power, not merely is diverting, or would, he, would he be usurping his power, uh, going beyond the Constitution, uh, going beyond legislative mandate, and, and, and diverting funds from things where there actually are people suffering, as you pointed out, Puerto Rico, California, other places. But the whole thing is would be predicated on the notion that there is a national emergency on the border when of course there's not and and that when you start to see well, well, John, a when you start to see an executive that, that's critical yeah I mean that's critical because because what Donald Trump I guess doesn't understand what his lawyers I guess don't understand is yes the Supreme Court deals with the with, with the law and interpreting the law they also deal with facts. There right. are fact patterns that go along to every case. They apply the laws to the facts. Donald Trump will say there's an emergency at the border. Oh, what's the emergency? Oh, all the heroin coming across. Well, Mr. President, 90 percent, you can or, right. they'd say, they'd say to the Solicitor General, sir, 90 percent of the drugs that are coming across are coming through legal ports of entry. So, it, no, that's not relevant. Oh, well, well, we've got a caravan coming. Oh, no, you don't have a caravan coming up, Mr. Solicitor General. That, that actually was just a farce to help Donald Trump get elected. And you all stopped talking about it the day after. So that's not much of an emergency. Well, okay. uh, immigrants, illegal immigrants are streaming across the border at record rates. Well, no, actually, the facts show that they're at a 20-year low right now. No. You're exactly right, John. The fact patterns. Yeah. The fact patterns do not support any ruling right. that that would uphold a, a, an emergency declaration. It will not happen. There's only one emergency, Joe, right now in Donald Trump's life, and it's not a national emergency and an emergency at the border. It's a political emergency. And, and I'll, ju I'll just say that when you see a chief executive uh, invoking a totally made up national emergency in order to actually try to solve a political emergency and in that case in this context divert resources invoke this national emergency and and, and potentially uh, be deploying the military uh, in its service you are seeing the actions of an autocrat that is a that is the behavior that if you wow. saw it in a third world country you would and you, we have in many third world countries you would say well that's the guy who runs the junta um, that's the guy who runs right. the dictatorship, who is yeah, who's, I mean, who's instituting go. who's instituting martial law in the streets right. because his regime is crumbling. That's where we've seen this before, he, and that's where you'd be seeing in this context something very and, much parallel to yeah. that, and that's why it's so disturbing. And Mika, that, that's what many people are saying now that when we see, if we see uh, the collapse of democracy in this country over time, if we see the rise of autocrats in the United States of America, it won't be by somebody bringing tanks across the 14th Street Bridge. It won't be by, by uh, a junta uh, seizing television and radio stations. It will be by the continued erosion Chipping of away. Madisonian democracy, of checks and balances, of the seizing of Article I powers, the running over of the power of a free and independent judiciary, all uh, for the expansion of an imperial presidency. That's where Donald Trump is trying to take America right now. And Amika, that's why we're seeing some conservatives actually speak up and speak out for good right. reason. And just pointing out as we bring it back down to, uh, you know, 10 feet versus 10,000 feet, there are people getting paychecks today with a zero on them for working two weeks. Conservatives, uh, not in lockstep, you're talking about behind the president, Joe, declaring a national emergency for the wall. The Wall Street Journal editorial board writes this morning that it would strain the limits of his executive authority if he did that. The editors of the National Review call it another unwelcome step in America's long march toward unilateral government by the executive. Eric Erickson tweeted, when the next Democratic president declares a national emergency over gun violence and takes executive actions to curtail gun purchases, you can thank the people urging Donald Trump to do the same with regards to the border. Texas Congressman Mac Thornberry, the top Republican on the House Armed Services Committee, said, I am opposed to using national defense funds for anything else. And several prominent Republican senators spoke publicly against the idea. I don't want to see a declaration of national emergency. I think that's a, uh, uh, an action that would be taken in the most extreme circumstances. Advise against that as a bad precedent. 
even if the president's got authority to do it. I'd advise against it. Tomorrow, the national security emergency might be, you know, climate change. So let's seize uh -huh. fossil fuel plants or something. Susan Del Percio, uh, there, there obviously are some people who are speaking out. But I just want to step back and imagine the thoughts of people who live in Puerto Rico, who have family there, hearing the president potentially moving disaster relief funds from places like Puerto Rico to build his wall that most people don't want. I mean, this is incredible at this point, the way he's running over people uh, with a lack of care or humanity. And he's shown over and over that he doesn't have that humanity. And there is a real crisis at the border, one that he created. There are parents and children still separated. There are mm -hmm. people who are not being processed properly because in, at a point of entry, le seeking amnesty legally, because this president pr wants to lessen the amount of judges there as a deterrent. So people are basically in these horrible camps. There is a crisis for, for millions now of Americans who will, because of those 800,000 people, who will not be getting paychecks today. And I just can't help to, but think that every time there's people involved, the president just shows he has no heart. He has no empathy. And to Heilman's point, he's absolutely right. He, president is creating a has a political emergency and is trying to find using the national emergency as a way to get himself out of it and i hope more and more republicans do speak out about it and join a lawsuit if he does do it because the one thing that i find so shocking are all these members of congress republicans who are willing to see their most important thing that they have which is their influence as a legislative leader to the president it's just it, it goes to joe's earlier point about why the republican party is just falling apart because you have a bunch of people who are throwing away their principles and not willing to stand up for what's right they're just trying to avoid a primary and not mm. only are they, wow. they, they ceding their power true. on Capitol Hill, they're ceding our power. They're ceding right. uh, Article I power. They're, they're ceding <laughs> constitutional power. They're undermining this constitutional republic. And the checks and balances that have kept us going for over 240 years. And Rick, I want to follow up on uh, a point that Eric Erickson made yesterday on Twitter, that John Heilman's made, that, that other people have been making. And that is this. It's all about precedence. If, Do if Donald Trump can declare a national emergency on a phony issue where the facts don't even back him up, then what happens after a Democrat gets elected in 2020 and there's another mass shooting at a high school and we're seeing images of children being carried out? of their classrooms, out of their biology classes, out of their English classes with bullet holes all over them? What would stop a Democratic president from declaring a national emergency and seizing military-style weapons? What would stop the next Democratic president from shutting down coal power plants, like Marco Rubio said, because of the national emergency, the imminent threat of climate change? What would stop the, the chief executive from declaring that the Supreme Court uh, was was packed illegally by Mitch McConnell, so we're going to have to expand the Supreme Court from nine members to 12 members immediately. What would stop that? It's a rhetorical question. Go. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping. I'm hoping, Joe, that we would never elect a Democrat or a Republican ever again who would use uh, declaring a national emergency for political purposes. And the reason you know it's political is because what he's saying is, I will, I'm contemplating uh, declaring a national emergency. So that's the first giveaway. I'm contemplating over several days uh, of a national emergency. But it's contingent upon what Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer do, right? So the circumstances in which a national emergency would come about, where the president would, would rightfully declare a national emergency, would have nothing to do with what the leaders of the opposition party are, whether they're going to do it uh, or not do it. Look, I'm glad John Hallman brought it up. I hesitated to bring it up, but now I know I'm on firm ground. Uh, this is a step toward martial law. That seems 
rather extreme. And I don't think declaring a national emergency is declaring martial law, right. but it does, it, it brings us in that direction. And that's a very dangerous precedent. And so I, I asked my fellow conservatives and, and Trump supporters uh, who, who support what Trump wants to do on the, on the border. And by the way, Democrats share that uh, same, as far as I can tell, I don't know anybody who doesn't want border security. The question is whether a wall works. And the president has broken a fundamental promise, which is he said Mexico would pay for the wall. He said that they were going to write a check. He did actually say that. But here's he goes further and he says that I'm going to get Mexico now to pay, the wall, pay for the wall indirectly through a great trade deal. So first of all, the trade deal isn't even enacted. It has to be, it has to be ratified by the Canadian government, the Mexican government, and the United States government before it can be enacted. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's suppose that it is enacted and, the, and there's no provision vision in it to provide any money for the wall. But let's suppose it grows the economy, which we conservatives, we believe if we grow the economy, more revenue comes into the government, right? All that revenue that comes to the government, that's American taxpayer money. That's not Mexican money. So the, the, what Donald Trump would have his supporters believe is not only are we going to pay for the wall up front with the 5.7 billion he wants now, we would pay for it twice. And Joe, I just want to bring this all back to why we're here. As we sit here tomorrow, it will be the longest, if we reach tomorrow, and I assume we will at this point, it will be the longest shutdown in government history as we're talking about being on the brink of the declaration of a national emergency over a manufactured crisis. Remember why we're here. It was less than a month ago. There were reports all over the place, including on the cover of the New York Times, that said the president was ready to walk away from his border wall, that he said he just didn't think he could get it done. He saw that. He heard from people like Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh. He heard from Ann Coulter, who said, if the president doesn't get his wall, he will be a, quote, joke president who scammed the American people. This is a reaction to criticism he heard from conservatives, some conservatives. And now here we are on the brink of what he believes is a national emergency. After he had a deal, it's a great point. Mm -hmm. After he had a deal, that Republicans and Democrats had come together on and he right. agreed on. Right. Yeah. They were ready to move forward. And then he heard from Rush Limbaugh and Ann Coulter. And so here we are all this time later. And Mika, the impact, oh my Lord, the impact it's not only having on those employees, but even if Donald Trump and Republicans wanted to look at this cynically, the impact it's having on their approval ratings, just devastating. And imagine if he does declare a national emergency and that's struck down by the court, imagine how bad that's going to look for him because the court will lay out in black and white why this is not a national emergency and also how the president can't say, I'm going to declare a national emergency if I don't get my way in negotiations. This is a guy that wrote The Art of the Deal. I mean, this is more like The Art of the Steal. He's trying to steal this issue away by declaring a national emergency. Mika, it's not going to happen. If he does it, the courts will strike him down. Well, again, it's another uh, huge exercise in branding for him. It's disturbing. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.